In this video, we're going to generalize some of the results from the shear and bending moment diagram that we talked about in a previous lecture. So let's start with an example that we've already worked, which is a beam of length L uh, subjected essentially to its own weight. So we're going to talk about Q being a force per unit length. And in this case, we'll just say it's distributed evenly across this beam, which is supported at both ends. Now we worked this example previously, so if you don't remember, you might want to go back and watch that lecture. But what we found is that the shear force, the internal shear force at any cross section here, if we slice the beam as a function of distance along the beam, has this linear decrease. It starts at a value of QL over two and ends at a value of minus QL over two. Now the value of QL over two comes from simply the value of the support here, the value of the force here at the support, right? Because if we have a distributed load of Q, if I multiply by L, that's the total force acting downward uh, on these two supports. And, and due to symmetry, that force is split evenly between the two reactions. Now the bending moment, again, internal to the beam, we derived as being a parabola with the maximum value of QL squared over eight, but it had a parabolic form. So now let's see if we could think about these results in a slightly more general way. And to do that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a small little differential element just at some random location. So a small little element of width dx, and we're gonna imagine what's happening to that little element. So here we've drawn our element. It's of width dx. It has a shear force acting on both faces because we extracted uh, this little element from the beam. And that shear force is not gonna be equal. It changes as a function of position. So on this face, we'll call its value v. And on this face, we'll call its value v plus dv. So the value here plus a little bit. And the same goes for the moment. The, there's a value of the moment here, but the equal and opposite moment on this side is not quite the same magnitude, right? Because that moment, remember, had that parabolic form and changes a little bit as we move along the distance of the beam. And these changes are important. So now let's look at this and let's sum the forces and sum the moments for just this little element. So first, let's sum the forces in the y direction. So in the upwards direction, I have this shear force on this face, V. I have the shear force on this face, but it's in the negative direction. So I'll write that as V plus a small change, DV. And then I also have the amount Q here, and it's acting downward. But Q is a distributed load, so it has to be multiplied by its length. So in this case, its length is dx. And those are the only forces that are acting. So the two shear forces, this distributed load, and those ha that has to equal to zero. So we can see right away that the v terms cancel out because I have a plus and minus v, so those cancel out. Um, and if I rearrange this just a little bit, I can rewrite this expression so therefore I can write this expression as that dv, the change in the shear force, is equal to minus q times dx. And again, I've sort of color coded things so you can see where they come from. Now dropping the color coding, we can rearrange this to being a simple expression that says dv dx is equal to minus q. And so it tells us that the slope of the shear diagram on our shear and bending moment is equal to the negative of the distributed load. So now let's sum the moments and set those equal to zero. And in this case, what we're gonna do is let's just sum the moments around the center point here. And again, I will use a clockwise moment to be negative and a counterclockwise moment to be uh, positive. So we have a positive moment uh, from this side, which is m plus dm. We have a clockwise or negative moment from this side. So I pick up a minus m. We can see that q, the distributed load, doesn't add any moment because it's uh, by symmetry, it's acting equally on the left and the right side of this pivot point, so it doesn't cause any rotation. However, the shear force does cause a rotation. So this side wants to cause a clockwise moment, so that will be negative. So that's minus v times the moment arm, which in this case is half our differential distance. So dx divided by two. And then we have in the positive direction, right? Because this is, sorry, 
We also have in the negative direction, so let me just change the sign there, uh, also a clockwise moment due to the force V plus dV, also times the distance dx over two. And all that has to equal to zero. So let's move up a little bit here and let's finish this off. So we see instantly that the two m's cancel. So I have a plus and a minus m. So those pieces go out. And so what I'm left with here, now here we have to be a little bit careful because the v's have the same sign. So the shear has the same sign. So minus v times dx over two. So those two terms would combine. And then I pick up a term here, which is minus dv times this small distance dx over two, and that's all equal to zero. So again, dropping the color coding, we can rearrange this expression a little bit, but we also have to realize one essential thing is that ultimately what we wanna do is we wanna take the limit as dx gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So when I divide by d dx, I get an expression like this. And as we take the limit, as this thing gets smaller and smaller and smaller, then this term goes away. And I'm just left with a simple expression that dm dx, the derivative of the moment diagram is equal to the shear. So we have a nice relationship here, right? Which is the derivative of the moment equals the shear. The derivative of the shear is equal to distributed load. So now we return to our original shear and bending moment diagram. So the relation that we just derived was the derivative of the shear with respect to x is equal to minus q. And we see that instantly in this function right here, right? Because here q is a constant. The derivative of the shear diagram then is equal to a constant. And the a function whose derivative is a constant is just a line. So it's a line with a slope of minus q. And we can in fact see that the slope is minus q because the distance from here to here is ql. The distance from here to here is l. So therefore the slope is minus q. So that uh, result seems consistent with what we've already derived. The other result that we got was the derivative of the moment with respect to x is equal to the shear. And here we see the relationship that we just derived is consistent with what we found before because now it says the derivative of the moment diagram is equal to the shear. Well, if the shear is a line, a function whose derivative is a line is a parabola. And if we substitute both of these expressions in for the moment here, we would get that the second derivative of the moment with respect to x is equal to minus q by just simply substituting these into each other. And here we see that the second derivative of the moment diagram is the distributed load. Well, the second derivative of any function is its curvature. So since our distributed load is constant in this example, if its second derivative is a constant, it means a function of constant curvature, which is also a parabola. And the minus sign here says the curvature should be negative, so the function should be concave downwards. So these general relations that we just derived for a small differential element seem pretty consistent with some of the results that we found before. Let's go back to your previous shear and bending moment diagram and see if our new results make sense and are consistent with the results that we've already derived. So here we have a beam of length L and a load P applied in the center. We found previously that the shear diagram had a constant value of P over two. Right when it reaches this load, it switches, it becomes minus P over two. So it's two regions of constant shear, one positive, one negative. Our moment diagram starts at zero at the ends increases linearly to a maximum of PL over four, and then decreases back to zero. And we see instantly that these relationships hold because here Q is zero. There is no distributed load. So DV DX is constant. So we have constant regions of shear with kind of an instantaneous jump wherever we have a point load. DM DX is equal to the shear diagram. So again, a function whose derivative is a constant is a line. So here we have a positive slope. Here we have a negative slope. The value is the same. So the slope in these two regions is the same. And again, the slope being P over two is consistent with this reaching a value of PL over two at the point here on the X diagram of L over two. So these expressions here 
are another way that we can think about the shear and bending moment diagram in addition to the technique that we showed before where we simply section the beam as a function of x and draw the free body diagram.